I found it ironic that out of all the days of the year, my heart decided to reach its weakest point right before Valentine's Day. I spent most of my life suffering from cardiomyopathy, which is a disease that leads to heart failure because a muscle becomes so weak to the point where it can no longer pump blood to the rest of the body. I was just laying in bed one night when I suddenly had heart palpitations and had to be rushed to the emergency room. It didn't help that my boyfriend of five years and I broke up just a month before, which possibly contributed to added stress. I was immediately put on a waitlist for a heart transplant because of the urgency of my deteriorating health. Apparently I was lucky because I was matched rather quickly. The hospital was able to recover a heart from a deceased donor who was from the area. A Valentine's Day spent having open heart surgery and being single. Yep, Cupid certainly avoided me that year. My heart was as broken as could be. I laid on the hospital bed awaiting surgery. My surgeon went through all the logistics and I made the decision to not know who my donor was. Maybe in the future, but I wanted everything to remain confidential. It was morbid to think about how a dead stranger's heart would be put into my chest. After about six hours, I woke up in the ICU. The transplant was a success. I spent the next few months recovering. I felt like a brand new person. Aside from the occasional soreness and lethargy, everything was perfect. Life went back to normal. I resumed working at the office and everyone was excited to see me again. One day, I was in the break room making myself a cup of coffee. And suddenly, warning, this is going to sound cringy, but my life changed. The most attractive human being I'd ever laid eyes on entered the room. I was speechless. The attraction was instant. It felt like a movie. I've never been the type to be into soulmates, but when we locked eyes, my heart immediately fluttered. It scared me for a moment, and I had to grab my chest because I thought the palpitations came back. He asked me if everything was okay and looked concerned. Uh, yeah, sorry. This is like my third cup of coffee this morning. I should probably lay off the caffeine. We chuckled and joked around for a bit. We introduced ourselves. His name was Jake. I had never connected with someone so fast, but we ended up making plans to get lunch. He had just joined the company and wanted to make at least one new friend. Well, long story short, we hit it off and started dating, and yeah, everything was perfect. I hadn't told him about my heart transplant though. I guess it was because at some point he would see my incision and the thought of that made me feel really insecure. But the time came after months of being together, and I warned him beforehand. He assured me that it was not a big deal, and that it wouldn't make me any less attractive. It's a part of you, and I'll accept every inch of you. Flaws and all. After that night, I opened up to Jake about my heart complications. I told him that I was thinking about writing a letter to my donor's family to thank them. He was very supportive of my decision and encouraged me to call the hospital. I managed to find their contact information because they told the hospital that they wanted to get in touch with me. Jake would leave me alone in the evenings while I gathered my thoughts and jotted them down on paper. I was planning on mailing it over the weekend. That night, I got in bed as usual kissed Jake goodnight and fell asleep. I don't recall everything that happened that night, but it was terrifying. When I was younger, I would experience sleep paralysis on occasion and also have nights where I would sleepwalk, but never one after the other. But apparently some nights I would talk in my sleep and would scare Jake because he would think I was awake, but I was really unconscious. He thought it was cute though because I'd usually talk about how much I adored him. At this point, I don't know if I need more medical attention or to be exercised. But that night was the first and only night I ever experienced multiple forms of parasomnia. It was a sequence of one terrifying event after the other. First, I woke up from night terrors. My heart was racing and I was crying. When I turned around to face Jake, there was a woman I had never seen before in between us. I was forgotten. 
I won't be forgotten anymore. I started screaming and crying in my sleep, and Jake woke me up. He hugged me tight, and I fell asleep again. And then, she visited again. It's mine. He's mine. I started asking who she was, but she wouldn't answer my questions. I'll show you. She touched my chest, and immediately my heart started palpitating. Jake started shaking me in my sleep, and I heard his voice telling me to wake up. I took one final glance at the woman. I recognized that look. She was heartbroken. When I opened my eyes, I was in front of a gravestone. Jake stood in front of me, shaking and terrified. What? Why are we here? You were sleepwalking. I decided not to wake you up and follow you. I looked at the gravestone. It was not a name I was familiar with. But then, I remembered the last name. Let's get out of here. On the way back to his place, Jake was really quiet. I kept asking what happened and who Catherine was, but he wouldn't answer. Did I just screw up this relationship? I couldn't help but cry. As soon as we entered the house, he told me to sit down. So, you don't know who Catherine is? No. I'm so sorry. I don't know how I ended up there. And you don't remember anything you said to me? No. Can you please tell me what's wrong? Can I see the letter you wrote? I handed it to him. Jake looked like he was going to faint. Wow. Ugh. He sat down and told me everything. That Catherine was his ex who was really controlling and easily jealous. After the breakup, she stalked him to the point where he had to get a restraining order. Apparently, before I woke up in the cemetery, I said, Jake, I'll always be with you. He had no idea she had passed away. We were both speechless for a while. So, where does that leave us? Are you going to break up with me? What? That's absurd. I love you for you. Let's get some rest. I'll admit that it's freaky having his ex-stalker's heart inside of me. I do question if our relationship is genuine at times. I've heard that cellular memory is a thing. But my feelings for Jake are real. I just know it. And I know he feels the same way. Can you blame me? I'm only listening to my heart. I decided to study abroad during my sophomore year of college. I was so ecstatic when I found out I could spend a semester in South Korea. As a Korean American, it was the perfect way for me to connect with my roots but nothing could have prepared me for what would follow. I wasn't fluent in the language, but thankfully could get by. I faced a lot of culture shock when I was there, and for the majority of my visit, hardly made any acquaintances. I definitely felt like an outsider most of the time, and the only topics I could really talk about with people my age were K-drama, K-pop, and food. It was Valentine's Day, and I thought I would have had a boyfriend by now, but nope. I was as single as ever and spent it studying in the library. Not that there was anything wrong with that. The library was my safe place, and who knows, maybe someone special would be right behind a bookshelf. I've always been a bookworm, and I also thought this would be the perfect time to catch up on my romance novels. I was also relieved to see that I wasn't the only one spending their Valentine's Day at the school library. I was almost finished with my book when I looked up. I turned off my music. I was all alone. How sad. Where did everybody go? Of course this would happen to me. This was the worst Valentine's Day ever. No one to give chocolates to which meant I had no one for White Day next month. The day where guys shower their girlfriends with affection in response to being gifted on Valentine's Day. If only life were like one of the books I was reading. 
But then, suddenly, I heard a voice. Okay, I wasn't all alone. But I started to feel anxious, so I packed up my stuff and headed out. It was really eerie. I had to distract myself. So I thought about all the snacks I'd pick up at 7-Eleven on my way back home. I just wanted to be back in bed, binge watching shows. But then, I saw her. She looked so creepy. At first I thought her back was facing towards me, but then realized that her long black hair covered her face and she was wearing a white hanbok. I approached her with caution. Why did she look like that? Maybe she was lost. I didn't want to be quick to judge. Are you okay? When she heard my voice, she immediately disappeared. Maybe she was a figment of my imagination. I hadn't been sleeping well after all and hadn't eaten all day. I needed to get out of there. When I exited my school, I was shocked to see that the streets were empty. No students, no pedestrians, not even a single vehicle. Maybe I didn't get the memo and wasn't invited to an event. I started to feel sorry for myself again. I looked down and miraculously saw someone's shadow on the ground. I looked up, but no one was there. I looked down in shame. The shadow was still there. I looked up again, and the woman from earlier was in front of me. She wasn't there just a second ago. She was walking, no wait, floating so slowly. I was right behind her, but she didn't notice me. I debated whether I should run, cross the street, or act nonchalant and walk past her. I knew I should avoid her as much as possible. I had no idea who she was or what her intentions were. I didn't feel safe. But then she stopped moving and slowly turned around. I froze in horror as I caught sight of her face. Underneath her hair, she was pale, with dark circles and blood dripping down from the side of her mouth. She moved closer to me, staring right into my eyes. I couldn't move a muscle. She looked like a corpse. I didn't want to admit to myself that she wasn't alive. She said something that I couldn't quite understand. I didn't know how to respond to that. I think she was asking for directions, so I pointed straight ahead. She turned back around. Slowly, she hovered away. Thank goodness. I had to get out of there. I decided to skip 7-Eleven and run straight home. There still wasn't a single living person in sight. It was anyone's worst nightmare. Perhaps I fell asleep in the library and was now dreaming. But then, I heard the woman scream from afar. In a few seconds, she was right in front of me again, and I saw her moving towards me at an impossible speed. She grabbed my arm. Everything felt hazy after that. Maybe I had fainted. When I opened my eyes again, I was in my room, on my bed. Apparently, I was discovered by two of my classmates in front of my building. They carried me back to my room. I had to tell them everything. It came to my knowledge that she was part of an old Korean legend. She is what they call a virgin ghost, or Junyo Kishin. They explained that decades ago, she was a young woman who went to the same school as us. She was engaged to the love of her life after meeting him in class. She unfortunately died nights before her wedding, a virgin, 
and that bitterness and shame of not marrying has caused her soul to wander around in anger. She wasn't able to fulfill what society told her was her life's purpose, to serve her husband and bear children. Her hair was down because only married women were allowed to have their hair up. This angered me. Over the years, there had been numerous sightings, and she would always ask the same question. To lighten the mood, one of my classmates jokingly chuckled. It's a good thing you're not single. Flustered, I asked why. He said that there were incidents of the ghost hurting women or men who were in happy relationships, sometimes slashing their faces or pushing them to ongoing traffic. If she came across a newlywed couple, well, that would be really unfortunate for them because she would curse their relationship. Apparently, the only way to get rid of her is to have a shaman perform an exorcism or a ritual called a soul wedding where a virgin ghost marries a bachelor ghost. For a moment, I laughed about it. What are the odds that me being single prevented me from getting hurt or cursed? I can't decide on whether or not it's better to find a boyfriend or remain single. So much for finding my opa.